imagine V units. While I was marveling over the fact that Candy could blast so effectively and put on such a flawless, penitent sinner routine, that was just smiling reassurance. Like I said, Candy, my son can be quite a handful sign. Seriously, now I know my folks must must have gone through when I was growing up what my folks must, must, must have gone through. So, this is your project, right? A new VR system that made a face that made it clear that he was caught in between a urge to scold me and a desire to brag about his creation. And so he compromised and went about doing both at the same time. Imagine V is not just a VR system, Taki. They are the prototypes for the ultimate VR experience. You see, until now, virtual reality setup has been limited to facilitating simulated environments on two sensory levels, sight and sound. Sight and sound, mm, taste, nope, nope, smell, nope, nope, feeling, nope, nope, yeah, only sight and sound. But these little marvels of science go beyond that simulation reality on all five senses, including smell, touch, and even taste. This is the world's first total immersion VR experience. And at these words, my mind blocked. Blocked. And as I thought of them, I glanced at the back of the machine that my dad was claiming could make that fantasy come alive. Really? Because no offense, but they really look, don't look that advanced. That's because we hadn't cut some corners. Because we had cut some corners in the overall design. I mean, you know, how the bean counters can be, they all seem to think that you can create brilliant innovation without actually spending any money, so naturally Kenny and I had to get creative in terms of resources. Anyway, don't let that first glance fool you, Imagine V is made up of some of the most innovative technology the world has ever seen. The world's most advanced, tech, advanced sensory interface designed to give people a whole New level of VR experience, we're talking about a state-of-the-art work of pure genius. Seriously, I was in awe at this point. All I could do was look at the two machines, consider all the possibility of such new technology, which is why we can't afford to let anyone find out about Imagine V and how advanced it is. Exactly, can you ima just imagine what happened if some corporate spy were to learn about what we've managed to cook up? I understand that, but honestly, I wouldn't have told anybody and neither would mum. Look, it's not that I don't trust either of you. Well, at least for the most part, I just did my best to look innocent at this point and probably feel epically. But this is just so important and we're so close to completion. We can't take any chances, not when we are this close to our first big presentation and presentation. You mean, this VR machine are ready? They are up and running and everything? That's right, we have already tested the V-Century interface and even worked up a simple game for it. It was at the moment that my dad realised where I was going with this, especially with the way I was turning back towards the VR machine and very nearly drilling over them. Well, now wait just a minute here. Can I try that? You say that everything is working so that immediately helped his hand up in protest. Hold it, hold it, hold it right there. We really tested the sensory interface here. We have we have gotten them to simulate sand and taste and all of that. We have managed to get the interface working, but um, sand taste means that they haven't got the you no know, feelings, you know, the sense of touch working yet. But then I can be the first one to try it. Besides, what could go wrong? That made the face of disgust at this. The mind blocks. You know, professor, maybe we should let Takeshi give Imagine V a try. Imagine V means imagine five, right? All five sensory, you know, all five sensory neurons or a person can sense. What? Candy, whose side are you on anyway? I'm not trying to take sides, Professor, but since Takeshi and your wife already know about it, Imagine V, I don't see any harm in letting them give it a try. Besides, maybe once he's experienced the fruit of our labor, he will really understand just how important it is that we keep this a secret. I wasn't sure exactly can what ex why exactly Candy was suddenly coming to my assistant assistance, but to be honest, I really didn't care what she was up at that point. All I really wanted was to give this new VR system of theirs a try. She does have a point, you know. And after all, af 
the time you spend being vague and mysterious about this, you can really blame your own son for wanting to try it out. But a few seconds that glance back and forth between mum and I and his mouth open and closing in various ways. Open and closing in various ways. I was pretty ob- it was pretty obvious that he was trying to come up with an argument that could use to dissuade us or at least get us to stop blacking him. But before long, he groaned in patent dismay. Alright, fine, I surrender. I'm waving the white flag here. However, there's conditions. Conditions? First of all, you have to swear on your life that you won't tell anybody about the imagine V, let alone the fact that Candy and I let you in for a little joy, right? Sure, of course, I swear that, that. On your life, Takashi. I place my hands over my heart. I swear that on my life, I won't tell anybody about this unless you yourself give me the okay. A few seconds pass as that conceded me, giving a scrounging degree of displeasure. I'm going to hold you to that, Taki. Dad paused and glanced at mom, nodding reassuringly right before he issued the tired sigh. Alright then, my second condition is that since this is going to be our first real test of Imagine B and the game environment I cooked up, we are going to keep it short 5 minute tops. And don't even think about trying to beg me for more. 5 minutes is all I'm giving, I'm willing to give you. Seriously, we shouldn't even be thinking of doing something like this. And if we are caught, both Candy and your old man could get in all kinds of trouble while I was particularly happy about the, that restrictions, I could still understand the sense behind it and so nodded. I understand 5 minutes, I'm good with that, alright. My third and final condition is that anything happens if you feel strange or something doesn't feel right, tell me and we'll abort immediately. I can understand you being curious but you're still my son and the last thing I want is for anything bad to happen to you. And while technically speaking, nothing should go wrong, well, there's truth in all saying about playing it safe. Alright, fine. Glad to have that way out. Then I turned towards the two Imagine V machine that could be the future of the gaming world. And while I still appreciate Dad's concern, I didn't share it in the slightest. And so, can we get started? Okay, alright. Though I think I should have my head examined for letting you three talk me to this. With that settled, it didn't take long for Dad and Candy to get me hooked up in one of the Imagine V units. And from there, it took a few seconds work to fire up the, in- the VR interface. As you may have already guessed, the gloves and books are key elements in the tactile simulation and simulation elements of the system. As Candy spoke, Dad was securing the boots on my face while I donned the gloves. Hmm. Seems doesn't seem like some you know simulation kind of unit. Seems like some torture device, right? Like you know, you electrocute you and you know control your mind or something like that. The casket system we we have developed allows you to experience full body sensation, but given how much knowledge the average human being puts on their hands and feet, those elements require well special attention. Right, got it. I was only bang pay, barely paying attention to Dad and Candy as they went over to the science behind the innovation. All I was concerned about was to check out the future of the gaming world. I was already reaching up to my hands on the helmet when Dad claps his hands on my shoulder. Alright, what did Dad say? Look, Taki. Ideally, nothing should go wrong, but in case anything goes wrong, I want to brief you on proper procedure for disengaging Imagine V. Alright, makes sense. Nodding in response, then grabbed the helmet, held it up for me. As you can see, there are two knobs on the side of the helmet. These are controls for safety, disengage the sensory interface. If anything goes wrong or even kill off in any way, all you have to do is to grab both of the knobs, turn them backwards a sharp 90 degrees. This will safely disengage the sensory interface before disactivating the system. And even once the game starts, you still be able to feel the helmet and use the control. So what would happen if I just yank the helmet off instead? I don't know, presumably nothing. But since this is all new technology, you have to forgive me if I'm not in the mood to take stupid chances. At least nothing stupider than what I'm already doing. Okay, low. 
Whoa, the dad is quite handsome, right? His green eyes and all. Okay, if anything goes wrong, I twist the knob back and everything should shut down. Right, which is exactly what we are going to test before we do anything else. Dad lifted the helmet and placed it upon my head. And before he could get very far, Candice held, held, held up her hand. Excuse me, Professor, but before you put the helmet on, there's something I'd like to do. Dad frowned at this point for the matter, so did I. I hadn't forgotten how Candy had put the rules on me before, but at the same time, I could imagine her pulling over on pulling something over here and down, even before she would wait until mom and dad were away from the lab, making a move before making a move. Well, okay, what is it? Candy didn't say anything to this, instead, she stood up straight and looked me in the eyes, smiling with the tiniest hints of her previous flirt, giving enough to give me a bad feeling. She then wrapped her arms about my frame and put herself close. I had just registered the familiar warmth of her formidable breasts against my own body when she planted another of her potential keys on my lips, sending my heart beating fast, even faster. What in the... Whoa, the mom, the mom is like, hey, stay away from my son, man. Stay away from my son, you bitch. The considerable displeasure in the mom voice was most likely what prompted Candy to break off the keys before looking towards her. My way of wishing him luck, miss. It was clear from the scrounge from my mom now war that she's not even remotely satisfied with this, but my dad just chuckled easily. Well, I can certainly think of worse ways of putting that, but goodness knows I never object to having luck on our, on our side. I imagine I'd agree with that on this, but if not for the fact that this confirmed that Candy still had her eyes set on me, knowing that I would have to deal with that particular predicament sooner or later, I let out a sigh as I tried to relax, even as Dad lifted the helmet over my head before slowing and carefully guiding it into place. A few moments later, my eyes were cut off from the rest of the world. Hmm, you know what? Just in case, I'll save it right here. Save and let's get back. Oh, no, mix next. Oh, return, return. Okay. Hey, I'm back. I just went to the restroom. A few moments later, my eyes were cut off from the rest of the world. The first thing. First thing first, I'm switching the hammers on. There was a clicking sound followed by a shortly short followed follow shortly by a faint whir, whirling. Whoa, it's cool, right? Moments later the blank screen that filled my view erupted in colors bef before almost instantly resolving into image of the world around me. Can you see me talking? Sure can! Alright, good. Now we are we are gonna run a quick test of the force safe and basic system. It this isn't like your standard gaming system. After all, the Imagine V is basically interfacing directly with your body. Hmm, I wonder where is she sitting in this chair or the chair behind? But either way, let's continue. I nodded in understanding and so we spent the next few minutes going over the system with Dad and Candy instructing me on how to turn everything off if something went wrong. Alright then, I suppose that covers everything. Just one more thing, Taki. Once we switch on, Candy and I will be monitoring your vital signs and so on from there. If anything looks to be in the slightest bit haywire, I'm pulling the plug and that will be that understood. I understand that. Uh, that one more thing about the game I'll be playing. How do I play it? What is it like anyway? Oh, this game is very simple, Taki. More of a proof of concept than anything else. And as for how you play that mouth quirk with this chief, something I didn't like the look of. I'm sure you can figure it out. So let it be a surprise. Oh, that hey, you are all basically pushing me into giving you a test drive. If imagine five against my best judgment. So let me have some fun and a few surprises for you. Okay, I will. That's the spirit. 
that just smiled in satisfaction before he and Candy make their way off the office of the Imagine 5 platform we are using for this. Then they both took up stations at nearby computers, clearly looking to the morning, clear, clearly to monitor everything and make sure everything went smoothly. Alright then, Taki, I'm loading the program right now. Then Dad paused and then turned away, furrowing his brows in a serious manner. Remember, 5 minutes, that's all. 5 minutes. I still really wasn't happy about that particular restriction. Still, I expected that those 5 minutes would surely be better than nothing. Ready, Candy? Ready, whenever you are, Professor. Nodding, Dad then began rapidly tapping the keyboard. Da -da 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 then in case, game on. In that case, in an instant later, the screen before my eyes fled brightly, forcing me to close my eyes to avoid being blind. Then there was a loud whoosh in my ears and my entire body seems to tingle for a few seconds. He's being teleported. This is Swap Art Online version 2. Soon enough, those whooshing and the tingling were gone and I cracked open one of my eyes to see if that blinding light is still showing. But that was already gone, as was the lab. And in its place, wow. I breathed as I looked I breathed as I looked around, taking it what my senses perceived. Then there was no sign of my lab when my dad worked, let alone dad, mum or even candy. In its place was a strange world completely different from the world I knew, a world that seemed to be composed of mainly blocks. Minecraft, Minecraft. There were plants to be sure, there were grass rustling blowing by a slight breeze that I could feel against my own skin, carrying with a scent not unlike honeysuckle. There were trees, there were bushes, there were all the plants that you expect to find in the woods as well as a small scent of the forest, and those things looked natural enough but the rest of the environment I was clearly in was not. The ground I stood upon was made out of blocks. The mountain nearby was also composed of blocks and the valley that led off the side where I stood was made up of even more blocks. Blocks of trees, blocks of mountains, blocks of roads. But this doesn't seem like blocks. Hmm, the grass isn't made out of blocks. It was like someone had taken hundreds and thousands of cubes of shaped like blocks, coloured them in the colour of nature and proceeded to build everything that was now within view. Which, to be honest, was a bit disappointing. This probably counts. It is. This probably count is pretty pathetic. No way this is going to convince anybody here someplace that might actually exist. That was annoying for me. Suspension of belief and ability to lose oneself in the sort of gaming of the game. One was the biggest component of any media, whether it be movies, TV, comics, or video games. But the blocky design of the environment failed in a painfully spectacular way. But even as I was frowning in disappointment, the scent of pine trees found its way into my nose. And as I turned my attention to the nearby plants, which I noted had an excellent pol polygon count, I decided to go up to the nearest tree. I think this is the plant that has a lot of polygon counts, which, which, which means the blocks are very small, that's why it doesn't seem to be very Minecraft-y type. Pausing to examine it, I then held up my hand and noted that my game avatar hand looked precisely like my own. This prompted me to look down at myself and study my current form. To my surprise, the Imagine 5 system had managed to replicate my me perfectly everything from my physical build to my clothes have been replicated right down to the smallest details. Now that's pretty cool. With this out of way, I turn I return my attention to the nearby tree holding out my hand. Once more I hesitated just for a moment before placing it squarely upon the tree's surface. And the instant I did so, I experienced the exact same feel as a genuine pine tree. I could feel residual sap on my skin, and I could feel some honeysuckle from somewhere. I could feel the wind blowing gently, 
very cool, this sensory simulation is perfect so far. And with that, I decided I could forgive that for the abysmal polygon count of the terrain proper. After all, this was still a prototype.